Welcome back. It's a wonderful day. This is the day that the Lord has made. The scriptures say we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Uh, we thank God that uh, the COVID pandemic has eased down and uh, people are able to uh, socialize even more and travel. Uh, the restrictions that where they have fallen off in many nations of the world. We thank God for that. Hallelujah. I think we can all see how COVID, how satanic COVID was. In, uh, I, I am recalling this past term for my kids. It was a normal school term. It was enjoyable to be able to go and watch uh, them in sport and for them to travel to different schools. Hallelujah. We thank God for that. Hallelujah. What an honor it is to share the word this day. Uh, we thank you for taking time to listen and uh, thank you to those that comment, share and like. We encourage each one of us to do, to do that. We will greatly appreciate that. This week's message, I've entitled it Lessons from Habakkuk. Lessons from Habakkuk. As a church, we are going through the, the Bible corporately. We are now in the New Testament. We've gone through the Old Testament. We are in Matthew at the moment. Uh, there's a whole lot. The Bible is so rich. There's a whole lot that uh, we've been gleaning as we went through the scriptures. Um, and so um, I want to share just a little bit on Habba, lessons from Habakkuk. Uh, it is quite clear from that I'm talking about the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk is one of the uh, 12 minor prophets in the Bible. Minor does not indicate the, the significance or the weight of the prophecy, but it just has to do with the length of, uh, of the book. Uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah are called major prophets. I'm, I'm saying this to correct some people who have got the wrong opinion. Uh, are called major prophets not because of the weight of their prophecy or weight of their prophetic office, it only is, the, is referring to the size of the book. The book of Isaiah is, has got many chapters, 60 something. Jeremiah as well has got a lot of uh, chapters. So Habakkuk is one of the minor prophets. And um, we find that uh, as we read through the book of Habakkuk, uh, very little is known. Uh, he, said, he doesn't say much about himself. Uh, and very little is said about Habakkuk uh, in the Old Testament. But he was a prophet. His name means embrace. Uh, we can conclude whichever way we want that it could mean embraced by God, embraced by the people. But the name means embrace. Um, looking at the book, at the time he writes, he speaks of the impending uh, invasion by Babylon. So it enables us to locate the writing of the book of Habakkuk to around about 600 BC. And uh, Habakkuk prophesies uh, during one of Judah's most critical periods. Uh, his country had fallen from the heights of revival and, and awakening uh, during the reign of King Josiah. Uh, remember King Josiah, you can read about him, Second Chronicles chapter 34. He was a, ki uh, a king who came onto the throne, throne when he was eight years old. But he, God used him mightily in, uh, within the nation of Judah. Uh, and so when uh, Habakkuk prophesies, the land had fallen from those heights of revival and reform, the destruction of the altars of Baal to depths, to very low depths, um, where, where there was... At, uh, a, a oppressive treatment of, uh, of people, measures against the poor and the collapse of the legal or justice system. You could almost think that uh, uh, by saying that I'm describing our Zimbabwean situation. Uh, and so Habakkuk prophesied during that particular time, things were not going well in the nation. Uh, oppression was rampant, as I said. Strife and wickedness uh, w w w was... was uh, rampant and he prophesied during that particular time and uh, the book is structured in such a way that it is a conversation between Habakkuk and God Habakkuk uh, poses some complaints or questions and God answers back and uh, 
from the, from the way it's structured and from what he expresses and how God answers and how Habakkuk responds, we, we pick up a few lessons, we glean a few lessons that we can apply uh, within our different setups, within our different nations. Amen and amen. And so what we find is that as we begin in chapter 1, uh, he says the burden of, the, of, of, of Habakkuk, most of the prophets would put it as a burden. The prophecy, burden. It was a burden. And uh, uh, what we find is that uh, when, when he begins, he begins uh, with a distress about God's inaction, about the wickedness that is around him. God not doing anything about the oppression that is in the world. He wanted God to do something, particularly in the area of justice uh, for evildoers. Like I'm saying, when I describe this, it's almost like I'm talking about uh, our dear country, Zimbabwe. But uh, his word is, is uh, applicable in our scenario. So the, the beginning of the book of Habakkuk gives a frustrated prophet um, who channeled his frustration uh, in, through prayer and eventually into praise to God rather than uh, running away like Jonah did. Jonah ran and he went over to Nineveh. And uh, so we find that Habakkuk begins, therefore, with this uh, cry. I'm reading from verse 2 of Habakkuk chapter 1. O Lord, how long shall I cry? And you will not hear. Even cry unto, uh, unto thee be, uh, of violence and you will not save. Why do you not show uh, me iniquity and cause me to behold grievances? For spoiling and violence are before me. And they are, they are those that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceeds. That's the King James Version. Let me uh, open it up in uh, the New King James Version. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry? And you will not hear. Listen, that's exactly what I'm saying. He begins, even cry out to you, violence, and you, you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention. Uh, there is strife and contention arises. Therefore, the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, perverse judgment proceeds. It was like, uh, like I said, uh, Habakkuk feels that God is not doing anything about the evil that is before him, about the injustices that he's seeing around them. That's sometimes how we feel when we look at our country, Zimbabwe, or other nations of the world, uh, as if God is, uh, is not doing anything. Uh, wild violence and injustice prevails and, and, and continues. Um, and so when he says that, what we find is that God then replies him. We say the book of Habakkuk is a conversation between God and Habakkuk. I think the, one of the lessons to pick up from there is that we need to be able to converse with God in such a manner where we talk to him. Whatever burden we have, whatever complaints, whatever things that we have uh, on our heart, be able to express them to him and he will speak to us. I like what the hymn writer says, uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Um, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what needless pain we, uh, oh, what needless peace we often forfeit when, when we do not take our, our, our things unto God. So we need to learn from that to be able to express to God. Many times people talk about that when you are under uh, pressure and under stress, you need to, to be able to find somebody to talk to even if they don't give you solutions. I've discovered also that besides people, there is God to talk to. You can offload uh, before God and he can minister to you as you talk to him. So let's learn to come to in, into his presence. Express ourselves. Uh, unload and, 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 and offload the things that are bothering us and troubling us. Uh, amen. So God replies to, uh, to Habakkuk. Uh, after his complaint that, Lord, there is just injustice around me. You are doing nothing about it. Uh, God says in verse 5 of Habakkuk chapter 
uh, one. Look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded. For I will work a work in your days which you will not believe though it were told you. Hallelujah. So God is saying, listen. You might be living in Zimbabwe and it looks like the wicked are triumphing. They look like they are prospering. And some of them are stealing a lot and flaunting their wealth on social media. And you think that I am not doing anything. Uh, uh, in the courts seem to be captured. Injustice, bribery, and all of those things are going on around us. And you think, God, why? We've been praying. Why are you not acting? I know uh, when people sometimes share this, speak in frustration to say, uh, uh, God, is, there isn't much movement and we are still hanging on to the Cindy Jacobs prophecy that someday God is going to come through. But God answers, says, for I will work a work in your days which you will not believe, though it were told you. In other words, what we are picking from this, one of the lessons is that in the midst of all that is going on around us, God is at work. God uh, is working and work in the country of Zimbabwe. Not only Zimbabwe, whatever country God has placed you in, God is at work. It does not matter what is happening around you. It does not matter the injustice that you see. Yeah, the oppression of the poor, the, 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 whatever is going on around you, be reminded this morning that God is still God. Uh, God is still working despite what we see on our television screens, despite what we hear on social media. Whatever is going on, God says, I will work a work. He is working a work in our days. We are not left alone. The God of heaven is still in control. It doesn't matter who's ranting and raving. The God of heaven is still in control. He tells uh, Habakkuk, I'm raising Chaldeans who will bring judgment on, 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 on this wickedness. And sometimes, you see, the, 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 the answer that God gives to Habakkuk actually then uh, astounds Habakkuk. It's not what he, he expects to say, God, but how can you raise the Chaldeans or the, or the Babylonians to come and be the ones that uh, you use to judge the nation? They are more evil than us. So why are you doing that? So sometimes, even as God works, we do not... We, the way he works might be contrary to what we are expecting. But be, uh, rest assured that God knows what he's doing. And he will work a work in our day that, we will not, that will surprise us. So in the rest of chapter 1, there is uh, an uh, imagery that is used uh, of how the Babylonians or the Chaldeans are going to be, uh, come through and execute that judgment. They are uh, the, 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 the imagery that is used is of uh, fishing uh, and, and etc. You can read through that. Um, and so God uh, says to, uh, that's what he says to, 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 to Habakkuk. Um, and and uh, in what we again, again see is that in chapter 2, God continues to speak. And he then tells um, Habakkuk uh, about what is required in the midst of all that is happening, in, in the midst of the work that is doing, even though it's not visible per se, and, and sometimes it, there will come a time it will be visible, but in the midst of the injustice, the oppression that he's seeing around, he tells him what needs to be done. Habakkuk chapter, he says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the, on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Verse 2. This is how where God answers him now. Uh, I have skipped another complaint or another prayer that Habakkuk expresses in the first chapter. You can uh, go in and read that in detail. I'm picking a few lessons, like I said. He say in, 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 in verse 2 of chapter 2, God says to Habakkuk, Then the Lord answered me, said, Write the vision down. Make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it will speak and it will not lie. In other words, God is telling uh, Habakkuk, whatever it is that I'm going to say to you, write it down. The things that I'm saying will come to pass. Uh, though it tarries, wait for it. It surely will come to pass. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him. This is the verse that I want. But the just shall live by faith. 
This is uh, God's answer to Habakkuk. In the midst of all that is happening, in the midst of the despair that Habakkuk is beginning to experience, thinking that God is not acting on the injustice. God is not answering prayer. Injustice prevail, oppression, and all sorts of things are happening. God then says, the just shall live by faith. That is a word for us within our, our, our nation, within our nations of the world. The just shall live by faith. We need to remember, and that's exactly what God says, to say in the midst of all that is going on around us, the only thing that will make us rise above our situations is if we, the just, live by faith. What does it mean to live by faith? It means you do not let the circumstances around you dictate to you how you ought to respond. You do not let the circumstances around you steal your joy because the just shall live by faith. And we can break it down in many different ways. First, to, to, to say the just shall live by faith implies our faith, uh, uh, rather our, our connection with God, our belief in God, our relationship with God. So in, in true West sense, in essence, the just shall live by faith. It is only our relationship with God that is able to sustain us in the midst of the injustice that we'll see. It is that relationship that must be nurtured. It is that relationship of reading his word and praying that will keep us afloat because there is many things that are contrary to his word, many things that are not right that are happening around us. But the just shall live by faith. Uh, faith is what is required for you to be able to overcome. And we can also look at that faith, meaning it is that faith that can make us appropriate the promises of God. Mark 11, 23. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Uh, have the God kind of faith. Where Jesus spoke to the tree and addressed the tree that no man eat fruit fr from you from, uh, from this moment forward. And it says the next day as they went around, the disciples pointed to him and said, Look, master, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away from the roots. Speak to your situations. Uh, speak to them. And, and command them and speak the word of, or, or, word of God over your situation. Don't allow them to dictate to you. Speak what the word of God says. Confess what the word of God says. Because it is the word of God that will make us overcome. The just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. Faith in his word is what is required. So speak God's word. Don't accept the conditions that are contrary. And let them dictate to you and, 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 and uh, govern how you live and how you react. The just shall live by faith. It is interesting that this is the verse that we find in Romans. Where Paul uh, uh, puts it as it were like the whole gospel rests upon this particular scripture. So this is where this scripture is quoted again. Romans 1.17, Galatians chapter 3 verse 11. The just shall live by faith. So Paul quotes it in, in both instances. Um, uh, the righteous shall live by faith. So, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's also interesting to note that this was the verse that was the uh, key verse in the Reformation. Martin Luther took, it, took that verse and began to declare it. The just shall live by faith. It was that verse that brought about the reformation. And that brought about a change and broke the dryness that had been brought in by the dark ages. The just shall live by faith. And uh, through that, the truths about salvation were restored. The just shall live by faith. So in the midst of our bleak situation, our bleak circumstances, uh, when things don't lo look like God is not doing anything, the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. 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 We need to be able to uh, live by faith. Live by faith in his word. Live by faith. Faith meaning our relationship with him. Hallelujah. Uh, chapter 3. There is quite a number of things that come up. Where he talks about wars or judgments. Upon, upon particular categories of people. I'm not going to get into that. But... Uh, I, uh, I want to get to one aspect of chapter 3 that uh, Habakkuk uh, uh, deals with 
that uh, is very critical even in our response and also a key lesson for us to learn uh, in terms of uh, what God uh, is doing and how he wants us to respond. How Habakkuk responds. In chapter 1, he starts in despair. He starts crying out to say, God, what? You, you are not doing anything. Uh, the, the, the wicked are prospering. The wicked are, 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 are oppressing people. The wicked are doing this and this and that. Um, and then in chapter 3, this is how he then ends uh, his, uh, his, his book as he writes. He says in verse 17, um, Though the fig tree may not blossom, hallelujah, no fig fruit beyond the vines, hallelujah, though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no head in the stores, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet or hind's feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief musician with stringed instruments. Hallelujah. So Habakkuk says, though the fig tree may not blossom, things are not going well. There is injustice. And uh, again, in this agrarian economy, th the fig tree is not blossoming. There is no fruit in the vines. The labor of the olive is failing. The fields yield no food. The flock is cut off from the fold. And there be no head in the stores. Looks like God is not answering. It says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So it is important that each one of us are able to respond just like Habakkuk. It does not matter how things are going around, around us. Yet, if, even though you have lost your job, he said, okay, uh, you can substitute uh, all the things that uh, Habakkuk says to your situation. Even though this has happened, even though uh, illness has come my way, even though I've lost my job, even though this has happened, even though this has happened, even though there's been attack on my marriage, even though there's been uh, the finances are, 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 are oppressing me. There is pressure on my finances. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is important that we rejoice no matter the circumstances. We need to trust no matter how things are going around us. We need to trust God that he is in control. That is going to come through for us. We need to rejoice in him. I, I, what I always do is to imagine my situation. And rejoice and say thank you Jesus. Whatever situation. Be it a financial situation. I imagine it and, and say thank you Jesus. There is this pressure. Thank you God. I imagine uh, whether there is whatever pressure it is. I, I bring it into mind. I say thank you Jesus. I bless you and I praise you. As I declare those words. I have the picture of the situation in my mind. God, I thank you. God, I praise you. God, I lift up your name. In the midst of the circumstances, even right now in the midst of our Zim situation, things are not going well. Prices are going up. We need to be able to say, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Uh, now notice, you are not rejoicing because of the situation. You are rejoicing in the midst of the situation. Yet I will rejoice. Why? Because you know that God will come through for you. Hallelujah. God, I give. in the midst of the, the turmoil around me, I give you thanks. I give you praise. I give you glory and I give you honor and power. Because you are worthy, Jesus. Yet I will rejoice. In other words, we must uh, appropriate the joy that belongs to us. Uh, uh, I like the song that we used to sing. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Didn't give it to me. Can't take it away. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And it cannot take it away from me. Jesus himself says, I have given them my joy and no man is able to take it away from. There is no one that can take this joy away from us. It is us that decide to, to, to let go of that joy. Uh, we are completing him. We are completing his faithfulness. 
We are complete in his joy. This joy is our... Actually, uh, the, the scriptures say the joy of the Lord is your strength. It will strengthen you to go through the difficult times. Peace and joy don't come from the situation. Happiness depends on happenings. Joy depends on Jesus. Hallelujah. So we must appropriate that joy. This joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. It cannot take it away from me. So instead of becoming depressed, uh, stressed, uh, and all downcast and down and out, begin to lift up your voice in praise. Begin to rejoice. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Notice salvation. Salvation so so. He, he, he takes you out of the situation. Salvation is not only salvation from sin, but deliverance, health, healing, prosperity, the God of my salvation. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. God indicated to, to, to Habakkuk that I, I am doing a work in the midst of it all. So we must be able to rejoice. We must be able to give thanks. We must be able to trust that even in uncertain times, and when we don't understand his plan, that God is working at all, all things, that God is working all things together for good to them that love him. Hallelujah. God, with God, there is no disadvantage. Satan does not have an upper hand. God is in control. He makes all things work together for good to them that love God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how uncertain the situation is like. It doesn't matter how things are. Our joy and our peace are completely independent of our circumstances. Hallelujah. John 15 verse 11, I think I've made reference to this. These things I've spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. That joy of the Lord is our strength. Philippians 4 verse 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep and guard and garrison your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So it is important that each one of us rejoices in the Lord in the midst of the circumstances. Uh, I like what uh, Habakkuk says as we continue. He says, the Lord God is my strength. That's why he rejoices. The Lord God is my strength. Hallelujah. I like what the psalmist says in Psalm 30. They looked to the Lord and their faces were lightened and they were not ashamed. Hallelujah. He's not going to let us down. Uh, in Debele would say, Agastias Kalen. He, he's not going to let us down. They looked to the Lord and the, their faces were lightened and they were not ashamed. In other words, as we rejoice and we look to him, he's not going to leave us in a spot uh, and let us down. No, he's not going to let us down. He's God. I, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He goes on to say, he will make my feet like deer's feet. Hallelujah. I'm not sure if you've seen D. Uh, I normally uh, would uh, replace this with probably Impala in our African context. I like the way they, they are swift. I've watched them. Um, there's a place where I actually take a walk in here in Bulawa. Early in the mornings, they do have Impalas. You know, the way they just jump over bushes and, and, and obstacles. Very graceful. Ta, 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 ta. He will make my feet like high, like deer's feet, like impala's feet. He will make me to walk upon my high places. Hallelujah. God is going to cause us to triumph in the midst of the difficult situations and circumstances. But many times we, we lose, con we, 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 we become depressed, downcast, distressed because we don't appropriate the joy that belongs to us. Habakkuk says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God. Of though the fig tree may not blossom. Though there be no fruit on the vines. Look, 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 listen, everything that he mentions is negative. There's nothing moving. This is an agrarian society. Fig tree may not blossom. F no fruit on the vines. The labor of the olive fails. The fields yield no food. There is drought. Temperatures are high, like what's happening in Europe. Though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and no head in the stores, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I don't know what your those are. Though your situation, put your own situation. Though this has happened. Though that is happening. Though this is happening. Though this is happening. Though this is happening. Yet I will rejoice. Make a decision. 
Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. Notice the contrast. Notice the triumph. Notice the, re- the praise and the rejoicing. Compared to verse, chapter 1 verses 1 to 4. He begins complaining. God, this is what is happening. You're not doing anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. But listen to the triumph at the end of the chapter of the book. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. That is the way to overcome in our situation. That is the way to overcome in the Zimbabwean context. Or whatever nation you are in. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. So says the, the, uh, Paul, the, the writer in, in, in Philippians. His joy is our strength. And this joy no man can take it away from us. It must be a conscious effort. When pressure piles up, imagine, whatever that, that situation, in the midst of the situation, imagine it and give thanks. Sing a song of praise. Sing a song of thanksgiving. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Rejoice. Laugh. Sometimes I don't, I don't even praise. I just look, imagine the situation, and I start laughing. I start in the natural sometimes, and then the laughter moves into the supernatural. And there's joy birthed from, from, from the inside. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I encourage you, I, I, I urge you to rejoice in the Lord. In the midst of your situation, in the midst of your circumstances. Take these lessons from Habakkuk. Habakkuk, the prophet, says, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Don't be cast down. Don't let the circumstances pull you down. Don't be downcast. Don't be depressed. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. What a book. Habakkuk. What a prophet. What a message. What lessons that he brings to us in modern day. Zimbabwe, modern day, whatever country you are in at this particular moment in time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. May the Lord bless you as you rejoice in him. May breakthroughs come your way because they will. He will come through for you as you rejoice in him. Why? Because notice you are giving praise. And the scriptures put it clear. He abides in the praises of his people. Not in the complaints of his people. The praises, not in the memories of his people. The praises of his people. As we uh, give him thanks, as we give him praise in the midst of our negative situations. You don't wait for the situation to improve to give thanks. In the midst of that situation, you give thanks. You rejoice. You rejoice in the Lord always. Hallelujah, hallelujah. May the Lord bless you in this coming week. May his joy be your portion as you let that joy bubble forth from the inside of you. The fruit of the Spirit One aspect of it is is joy. Let it be your portion, even at this hour. Hallelujah. God bless you. If you do not know Jesus, there is no way you can know joy. I said happenings. I said happiness depends on happenings. So there are people who are happy, but when the happenings change, the happiness goes away. But joy depends on Jesus. So for you to have joy, you need to have Jesus. So if you have never received Jesus into your life, you will never know true joy. I urge you and encourage you to receive him. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. When you do that, when you speak it aloud and invite him into your life, he comes in and his joy becomes your portion. His joy becomes your part and you are able to walk in that joy. That's where it begins. Hallelujah. So take this step. Accept him as Lord and Savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful week. Amen and amen.